So this is the fastest, and I say this a lot, but people don't listen. This is the fastest adoption of any technology ever recorded in all human history. We are at a point in time where we are seeing adoption at a scale that we can't comprehend. Stuff like central bank digital currencies is an adoption of blockchain as the predominant way of transferring value. We are seeing sovereign states getting involved in crypto. We're seeing pension funds, we're seeing asset managers, and we're seeing a retail revolution because retail front ran everybody. We're seeing a pace of innovation that is difficult to comprehend. And in a digital world, the value of goods goes to zero. Everything goes to zero in a digital world because you can make infinite amounts of it with Moore's law, i.e. the ability to uh, increase computing power. And if you add edge computing and other things on top, it keeps it going. So what blockchain did was secure value in a digital world by creating scarcity. Okay, that's a big statement. And also, Ethereum created the ability for any contract of which everything, including me appearing on this podcast, is essentially a contractual term. Which I agree with you, over email, I will do this podcast, right? Everything, every contract on earth goes on blockchain. So if you're armed with a piece of information like this, you are stupid to bet against it. Why is it important in context of everything we've spoken about? Why did I get into crypto? I got into crypto in 2012, 13, because I saw the financial crisis and the European crisis, and I knew that nobody owned anything. Because when you've got a collateral and leverage of 30 times or whatever it is, there's 30 claims on the same thing, so you own a 30 second of that collateral. Right, so that means you get wiped out. And so that was a trouble to me, plus the printing of money. And I know some people say it's not printing money. I don't care the mechanism by which it works, but it works as a denomination. I've proven it. Those two things are big issues, right? The devaluation of your money and your savings and um, the fact that you don't actually own anything. So we go back to the Russia situation, it doesn't own any of those dollars. So Bitcoin comes along that becomes very, very interesting for solving what we are now seeing writ large. And Ethereum comes along and you've got this contractual terms and this kind of you can something you can build the applications layer. So they start building the DeFi world, which is decentralized finance because you don't want the banks involved. Yes, because that's a problem because the banks are too interlinked with the leverage in the system. And so then that doesn't function in the way it should do. Monetary policy doesn't work. Hence why central bank digital currencies are coming. And I know people hate it, but I don't care. It's happening. And they are going to use it for direct transfer payments. And yes, you will have a different rate of interest for different people because they want to penalize some people versus others. And people are going to hate it. It's actually more effective than what we've got now, which is really blunt tools of taxation and um, monetary and fiscal policy. So I think it changes a lot of that. I know that's a very unpopular view, but it is what it is. It's inescapable. What you need to do is maintain your privacy within that. And that is stuff like zero knowledge proofs and other things that are coming within this cryptography. So big picture, right? We're seeing every single signal you would ever need to see to say this is going to be the predominant architecture of the global financial system and the global system of value and of all digital assets, and of all contractual terms. Which means it's gigantic, and it's only a $2 trillion asset class. And therefore, if it's the same size as any other asset class, it's gonna be 200 trillion, or 300 trillion. But considering all equities and all fixed income, they're all gonna go on chain as well. You know, it becomes the architecture of the world, much like the internet became the architecture of the world. This is the value layer of the internet, and the contractual layer of the internet. So, the market is a exponential asset, and therefore you need to look at it in a log trend. It's driven by adoption effects, which is Metcalfe's law. So it's Metcalfe's law, why, why, why it's so fast in its adoption, because it's built on top of two other networks. The internet, that was built on top of the data network, which was mobile phones and cable. So three networks on top of each other produce faster effects every time, that's called Reed's law. So Reed's law is at play, with Metcalfe's law as the way of judging it, which is basically the number of people on the network 
and the number of interconnections and the value they transfer amongst each other. That is the how digital assets work. When people say you can't value them, they're magic internet money, it's nothing. It's not true. It's entirely based on Metcalfe's law. It's entirely based really on the value transacted on chain uh, in terms of dollar amounts and the number of people transacting. Those two explain almost all price in crypto. So in a exponential asset, much like Amazon stock, which is and Facebook stock, you start early stage of adoption with high volatility because you don't know if it's going to succeed. Are we going to get adoption or not? Then over time, the volatility shrinks, but the rate of increase increases, uh, uh, you know, continues to go higher in that logarithmic exponential trend. So to understand all of this, you just need to put up log charts of everything and everything looks normal. Then. Same as it does for Google, Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Tesla, they're all the same. Uh, and they're all network effect businesses. Even though you don't know what the network effect of Tesla is, there is network effect that's built into that stock. So, so now we are down 50%. Two standard deviations oversold versus that logarithmic trend which is normally where the market turns around. So this should be normal price action within the trend. So that's telling you, you should be more leaning forward and saying, okay, I'm looking for the low. Is it here, is it a bit lower, blah, blah, blah. And I think we reached that low, again, it's very much like equities. It's probably 60, 40, maybe 70, 30 in the case of, of crypto that we reached that low. So why what is the next accelerant well we know there's more adoption from institutions governments and everything else what's happening geopolitically is another adoption factor so that's interesting in itself so you're setting up for a perfect storm here. and with a force that powerful you shouldn't be too cute with the asset you basically should just buy and hold it and buy it when it sells off significant amounts because you know the, the risk reward skew is so ridiculously skewed to the upside